Hello, welcome to the 15 minute food for thought from the House of Peace. I'm so glad that you decided to join in. I need you right now to start a watch party and let everybody know that we're on. Go ahead and do that and let them know. Give us thumbs up, make some comments, let us know that you're watching. Appreciate you joining in. Tonight, tonight I'm talking about dynamic devotion. You say, what is that? Dynamic devotion. You know, sometimes as God's people, we often find ourselves as the minority. For example, many believers run into uh, values and practices in their workplace that go against godly principles. Yes, we all have faced these things. Even students in the schools and colleges also uh, encounter beliefs and ideals that are contrary to the Bible's teachings many times. But even in the midst of this is your devotion to God. If you are a believer, if you say you're all in, when I talk about that, if you're all in for God, is your devotion toward God? Is he head of your life? Are your expressions or actions showing forth God? If you're showing forth the love of God, are you are you showing forth loyalty God, to God? Because anything that you know that you're devoted to, those are to be the things that you're committed to. But are we devoted to God? You know, God has his people everywhere. God's people are all over the place. And he has planted them everywhere to be an uh, instrument for him, to be a witness of him, to uphold the light for the kingdom of God. So tonight, I want to I want to dive right into the book of Daniel. So get your Bible, get your tablet, get your phone, and let's go to the book of Daniel. And we're going to start at the sixth chapter, Daniel, the sixth chapter. You know, we were in Daniel on the last Bible study, and boy, I tell you, we learned a lot of things about Daniel in that first part and uh, in the book of Daniel and his uh, character and Daniel's love for God. So we want to get in there. I hope you have it. And um, let's jump right in. The Daniel, the sixth chapter, the first verse says, Darius, the Mede, decided to divide the kingdom into 120 providences. And he appointed a high officer to rule over each providence. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation, by the way. Verse 2, the king also chose Daniel and two others as administrators to supervise the high officers and protect the king's interests. And verse 3 says, Daniel soon proved himself capable than all the other administrators and high officers. Because of Daniel's great ability, the king made plans to place him over the entire empire. So, you know, these providences concerned have consisted of a lot of empires in the countryside that Daniel uh, had was over. It wasn't just him. It was other people that was uh, in the kingdom that was uh, placed over, had responsibilities. When you look today in the workplace or even in politics today, there are a lot of people that have positions. You have presidents and um, governors. You have commissioners, counselors, uh and in their terms, they had princes and even captains. And so when we look at this, God's people are everywhere and God has positioned his people in different places. So as we read this about Daniel's devotion, we want to see here in verses one through three that I read here, it talks about Daniel, him being the trustworthy manager. One of the challenges for employers is that trying to find trustworthy people, people that's going to do right when it comes to the company. People, even business owners today, they find a hard, hard finding trustworthy employees, you know, cause they have investments and they want to make sure that those that are over these different investments that they do right, uh, according to that, because these are a lot of companies have million dollar investments and they can't afford for their investments to be lost. So, uh, when you look at this, there are a lot of risks involved, high risk, and they need dependable people to protect their interests. Things were no different in Daniel's day. When Darius, the me, decided to appoint the, the appoint people over his rule over his providences, this is what he was looking for. He was looking for trustworthy people. So he 
looked at Daniel and he appointed other people to manage these 20, 120 providences. That's a lot of 120 providences. He was looking for leaders who could maintain the civil order, collect taxes, and stimulate trade and commerce. So he selected these 120 people to be governors over the providences. So that means they were protectors over the kingdom. And as you look at this, so Daniel was one of them. Daniel was one of them. So he had three main governors, and that was including Daniel. And now, why Daniel? Why did he pick Daniel? Well, because Daniel had an excellent spirit that was in him, and the king saw that in him. And that's talked about here in verse 3. It said Daniel's abilities and his qualities, uh, the king made plans to place him over their entire kingdom as he looked at him. Daniel was faithful. He was faithful. His reputation was above reproach. He was known to be above uh, bribery and even extortion. He was known to have great character. So let's look back over here in the scriptures. As we look back in the scriptures, verse 4 says, The other administrators in her office began searching for some fault in the way Daniel was handling the government affairs. But they couldn't find anything to criticize or condemn him. You know, and today we see politics all on television, and it is so much going on. In the politics and government today, it is frequently expected that one must do whatever it takes to, to neutralize and, if possible, eliminate opposition. We see that. We see it all on TV, all oh, the bickering and the fighting and this one doing that one and this one, oh, undermining this one and that one. It is Sometimes it is just mind-boggling that you can't understand why people are doing what they're doing and why they can't just get along. Why can't they work together? And so also we see that uh, they don't, this is like their motto or their slogan, they don't get mad, they get even. You've heard that? We don't get mad, we get even. And so as a result, office holders, candidates, lobbyists, and special interest groups often wage total war in which the only objective seems to be to win at any cost. We see that today. Your phone's ringing off the hook. Can you vote for me? Do this for me? Do that for me? It doesn't matter if you smear the other opponent's character or hobbying the person through dirty tricks. It's still going on today. And this was going on during Daniel's time. So when we look at this, go back to verse 4, it said the other administrators, there were other administrators. There were high officers began searching for some fault in the way Daniel was handling government affairs. But they couldn't find anything to criticize or condemn him. He was always faithful. There's that word. He was always responsible and completely trustworthy. Isn't that something? What is your character showing for? We all work jobs. A lot of us are working on jobs. So whatever responsibility the Lord has you to do, whatever is you doing, I know we was taught, whatever we do, do it with excellence, do it the best way you can. And be fair, be right, be honest. You know, I told my daughter all the time, even as when she was going to school, and I've always said, I always say at the end of the day, do the right thing, do the right thing, do the right thing. God is looking at you. You represent Christ. And God has his people all over. And we represent God. And if we don't represent God in the right way, what type of character, what, what is your character like? What type of character do you have? What do people say about you on the job? Can people trust you? Will people say, oh, no. Uh -uh, mm -mm, I don't trust them. They always doing something fishy. They always doing something suspicious. I don't know what they're doing. So, you know, we can't undermine people or try to criticize people when they, what they're doing. So what is your character like? Are you faithful? Are you trustworthy? Can the boss depend on you? Can the president or the CEO depend on you? I know on my job, I work for uh, actually, I might as well say I work with all the big shots. I work with the vice presidents, the CEOs, the, the administrators, all the way down to the managers and the supervisors. I work for all of them, and they, they, they are looking to me to help them look good. 
because that's what I do when in the marketing and communications. That's I make sure that their presentations are up. Sometimes I have to help create the presentations. And so even with that, there are people that are watching me on my job. There are people that are watching me, how I react to this, how I'm going to react to that, even on the job. You know, a lot of times I'm talking with people, I'm talking with coworkers, and they are um, asking me questions and, and different things. And so we have to make sure that our character, that we are who we say we are, who we claim to be. We must continue to practice righteousness even when it may not it may be socially frowned upon. What about you? Uh, can people trust you? The Bible goes on to say about Daniel. So when they saw this about him, they concluded this is what they did. These are his the work the ones that are working with him now. They concluded governors. They concluded our only chance of finding grounds for accusing Daniel would be connection with the rules of his religion. Isn't that something? So what they did was, it says here, so they tried to find fault in him. They said, we're going to find something, but they couldn't find nothing. He was consistent. His character was consistent, consistent. His actions was consistent day after day. He did what needed to be done. They knew he was a righteous man. They knew he stood for righteousness. So it says here, let's look at verse 6. So the administrators and high officers went to the king and they said, long live King Darius. Then verse 7 says, we are all in agreement with the administrators, officials, high officers, and advisors, and governors that the king should make a law that will be strictly enforced. Give orders that for the next 30 days, any person who prays to anyone, divine, here we go, or human, except to you, your majesty, will be thrown into the den of lions. During that time, that's what they did. That was punishment. They threw people into the lion's den. That's cruel. That's a cruel, cruel punishment. Now, Daniel was a righteous man. And the Bible says that Daniel prayed three times a day. They knew he prayed three times a day. They saw him praying three times a day. They went and watched him praying. This was my thing. You know, I'm on the job. There are those that are so busy, so busy about trying to throw you off, trying to get you to fall, trying to get you to fail. I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? One day I was in the office. This real thing that happened some years ago, it was a co-worker and I, we worked together for years, but they moved her office to another location. So even in that, I still work with her and I had to go to her office to take some equipment. I go to her office, I'm in there talking to her. Now she had her own office with a door. This lady, another co-worker from down the hall, she heard me in there talking to her as I was turning something to her office. And she came in there and she was like, hey, what are y'all talking about? What are y'all doing? You sure you should be... And so I was like, what is she doing? Is she your boss? No, this is what I'm talking about. There are people that are watching you. They so busy doing, trying to get in your business that they can't stay in their own business. Now, if she was doing her job, if you're doing what you're supposed to do, govern yourself, govern what you're supposed to do. She was too busy trying to see what we were doing. That tells me you must not have enough work or something's wrong. And this is what I'm saying. You bring a downfall on yourself because you're too busy watching other people. And it came about that she was always going to the big boss, who I knew, and telling her she would call on the phone when she wasn't there and say, so-and-so is checking out for lunch. Or they came back five minutes late. Petty stuff. You're so busy trying to make other people fall. Oh, boy. That's a warning against this. You, lest you should fall yourself. She was doing these things. Eventually, it caught up with her, and she was moved to another position. That's what I'm saying. Why are you doing these things? That's evilness. But even in the midst of that, God always has a plan for us, and he always has our back. Do you have good uh, character? Are you faithful to the job? Are you faithful? Are you trustworthy? Are you doing that what they ask you to do? Or are you uh, doing something that's crooked or evil? Oh, surely your sin will find you out just like the lady that was doing wrong. So in Daniel's case, we see 
that, oh, it's a lot going on with him. It's a lot because it's a lot because he was doing some things, but he was faithful to God. He prayed three times a day. He was faithfully serving his God and doing what was right. He probably was even praying for them, even though they were uh, coming up, even though the opposition was coming up against him. But Daniel kept on going. So I want to ask you today, do you have good character? Are you trustworthy? Are you a trustworthy manager or a supervisor or a governor or a vice president or a CEO, administrator, whatever your position might be? Are you trustworthy? Can God trust you in the position that you're in? That's what I want to ask you today. I got to stop right there. That's it for now. We're talking about this dynamic, dynamic devotion for the Lord. Are you praying? Are you seeking God? Because God's got it. I want you to tune in and get ready now for part two. Next week, we're going to be finishing on with this dynamic devotion to God.